Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're brand new here, my name is Stav and this is my channel, She Equips Herself, where we talk about concealed carry and personal protection and all sorts of stuff. So today, I've got Mac here, Mac's my boyfriend, and we're gonna do kind of a different video that I thought would be fun. I see a lot of people on YouTube doing like favorites videos for different categories. I'm also gonna include links below so you guys can check out all the stuff we're talking about. Some of them I get discounts for you guys for, so I'll also have those links below in case you wanna get any of these items. So we're gonna do a favorites video based on our current favorites for concealed carry and personal protection. started here with the first category, which is gonna be guns. So I'll go first. My current favorite concealed carry gun, which is what I've been carrying for a few years now, is a Smith & Wesson shield in 9mm. And Mac actually dremeled the rear sight, if you can see that right there. He dremeled the rear sight for me so I could do one hand operation. And it also has an apex trigger kit in here. I've got some grip tape on it that helps me to grip it better. And if you wanna know why I chose this gun as my concealed carry gun, I do have a video all about how I chose it. So I'll link that below. But I'll go to you now. What is your current favorite concealed carry gun? Uh, I also carry a Smith & Wesson shield, but I carry the four inch barrel, the Performance Center four inch barrel. And I also have a TLR six on the bottom, which is a flashlight laser combination. I don't know if you could, you can't see the laser on my hand, but when you turn on your flashlight, the laser comes on as well. Um, it comes with fiber optic sights. I got rid of the rear fiber optic sight when it came, and I also put the original shield sight back on, and also dremeled it down for one hand operation. And maybe we'll have to talk more about one hand operation at a later date, but the four inch shield uh, has been great for me. It's all stock except for the sights, but it's just fantastic. I don't need a trigger kit or anything. But it also is great because we're together a lot, and a lot. We uh, we can interchange magazines. It's one of the one of the reasons I carry. I, I think it's a great gun, but also I like the idea of us having the same magazines, same ammunition, and we can interchange magazines. <laughs> if we got into a, a team gunfight, I guess. But let's hope that doesn't happen. So the next category is gonna be ammo, and like he just mentioned, we carry the same gun, we also carry the same ammo. Federal HST 147 grain, it's my favorite, without question. The, these bullets just, they, they perform very well, and the accuracy and reliability out of them is just top notch. It's, I can't say enough about that bullet so far. Okay, so the next one is holsters, and as you can see, we're both very different sizes and shapes. I'm a girl, he's a guy, so we carry differently. I have a lot of holsters that I really enjoy. If you've seen some of my videos, you might have seen them. But one of my absolute favorites, especially in the summertime, which it is right now, is my thigh holster. It looks like this. I'll put a clip in right now so you guys can see what it looks like when it's on me and how it works. But because it's summertime, it's a little more difficult to carry sometimes, especially if you wanna wear skirts and dresses. And since the fall is coming, We've been having some cooler mornings here in New England. I know I'm gonna be pulling these out of the closet soon. These are my concealed carry leggings and they've got a holster built into the waistband in the front and the back. I use the front one and there's a really thick piece of rubber here to protect your trigger. So I know I'm gonna be using these a lot in the coming months as well. Yours? This I think started off as a Bravo concealment holster for a standard shield and I just took my heat gun, heated it up and just plowed with with the TLR6 on there, my current holster, and I think I cut the bottom off to make it a little more compact. But Bravo Company, it, it, they're a good holster company. It's a Kydex pancake or belt slide holster, and I, that's how I carry, I'd say, 90% of the time. So, you know, untuck a shirt and I'm fine. If I need a little extra concealment, then I go to the Alien Gear, and that's been a decent holster for me. I actually generally have preferred the crossbreeds over the years, but the Alien Gear is a decent holster. If you get an Alien Gear holster, don't lose your Allen wrench. And I, I mean don't lose it, I mean just make sure it's handy all the time. These constantly loosen up on you. 
they're a pain in the butt. You're, you'll always have to tighten them up. But as far as the gun on your body, it's pretty comfy and you can carry all day long and it does enhance the concealability a bit. So I have these Mag Gut magazine extension kits and my wonderful boyfriend was nice enough to install them in my magazine. Normally I carry a seven round magazine in my gun because it fits flush and it conceals the gun better. But with these fancy kits, you can take a seven round magazine and turn it into an eight round magazine. So now I have the same size magazine with eight rounds instead of seven. So that's the plus one extension. They also make a plus two extension. So we took my eight round magazine and now we added two extra rounds to it so I can carry 10 rounds in what used to be an eight round magazine and it's shorter than what I used to carry, which was a hive. Which is what I still carry. Because we haven't 100% tested those out yet. I hope they work, I got a lot, I, got, I feel good about them. I just haven't had the time to do it. And I'm not ex super excited about the hives. They work, but sometimes they don't lock your slide to the rear, that's the only problem I've had yeah. with them. But they're quite a bit bigger. I carry an eight round magazine, a Smith & Wesson eight round magazine in the firearm all the time. And then any magazine I'll go to after that is going to be a, a 10 round magazine. So just to compare, this is a 10 round magazine with mag guts and this is a 10 round magazine with the hive and you can see it sticks out quite a bit more on the bottom. Yeah. So there's a little bit more to it. So I'm really hoping these mag guts work because I'm going to definitely probably switch to those. Yeah, we're going to nice. test those out at the range and I'll let you guys know how, how well they work. Hopefully they work really well because that would be really handy. The next category is going to be magazine pouches. Mine's not exactly a pouch because I don't like to wear belts. So the thing that I found that works the best for me to carry extra rounds on my body, which I recommend, is something called a Neomag. And I actually have three of them because I love them so much. And I've done a video reviewing these. I show you exactly how they work and all that. But it's basically a magnet right here. And there's a clip on the front and you stick it in your pocket so the clip is all that's hanging out and then you put your extra magazine in your pocket and it clips to it and then you can just pull it out and the Neo Mag stays in your pocket. So if you don't like wearing belts or you like to carry your extra rounds in your pocket, I wouldn't recommend just throwing your magazine in there. If you get something like a Neo Mag, that'll help you keep your rounds facing the same direction and knowing where your magazine is all the time. They also make ones with longer clips like this. They have two different clip sizes, I believe. They have the shorter one and the longer one, depending on the size of your magazine. So that's how I carry my extra rounds. I use Kytex, K-Y-T-E-X. It's just Kydex. It's got a, it's super lightweight, super small, it goes on my belt, but it has this little clip on there so you can clip it on and off super easy, super fast, and it holds a magazine very good, but when you need it, it comes right out. It's just a fantastic mag pouch. I'm very happy with these. Okay, now we're gonna talk about books. If you're gonna be learning about self-defense and self-protection, books are a great resource. I did a video on my seven favorite books on this topic, so if you want, you can check that out too. But one of the newer ones that I've gotten is this one right here. It's called The New Superpower for Women and it's by Steve Cardian. Uh, he was a law enforcement officer and I think a trainer for the FBI. And this book is really great. It's all about situational awareness and different things to think about for women particularly. I've highlighted and written notes all over this book. It's really great so I definitely recommend to read this if you're a woman and you want to learn more about self-protection and self-defense. I'm pretty basic. The Art of War. They're both fantastic. This one's the better one. If I was going to buy them again, this is the better one. It has better explanations, but they're both good. There's just a lot of information in here about man management, leadership styles, and self-defense. So, simple read, fast read, and tons of good information. For flashlights, this is what I usually carry like day to day because it's so tiny. So does Mac, we both carry the same flashlight. These are made by Streamlight and they're really small but they're very bright for such a tiny flashlight. And they've got this little clip so you can carry it really easily. So that's like my day to day, carry all day long kind of flashlight. 
But I recently got this flashlight by PowerTac. It's the E9R. And there are a few things that I really like about this. First of all, it's extremely bright. Like we took the dog for a walk the other night and I took this with me to try it out. And when I turned it on, it's like blinding. You can't tell now because the lights are on here, but it's very bright. And it's got four different settings for brightness. So it's like low, brighter, brighter, and then the brightest, it's very bright. And you charge it, it's got this little magnetic charger here, which I think is kind of neat. And it has a light that tells you when it's charged. It has a bezel end on it, so you can use it to hit someone if you needed to. And it's got a clip, so you can carry it easily. So this is one of my new favorites. It's very bright and it's a great light. Um, they gave me a discount code, so you guys can get 40% off these lights. They're a little pricey, so the 40% off is actually a great deal. So check that out below. But now Mac's gonna tell you his current favorite. I've been playing with that and I'm gonna get my hands on that one. I'm gonna probably steal that when she's not looking. But for I don't know how many years, many years I've been carrying a SOG flashlight. It also has the bezel end. I actually grinded down one end of the bezel end because I would carry this all the time and it wore a hole in my pants always in the same spot. So I grinded it where it would, so I only have the bezel on one end. But fantastic flashlight, also has multiple settings so you can dim it down, you don't need all that power. But I've dropped it a bunch of times, it's just all worn out. I did break the clip and I need to contact SOG and get a new clip, but I still carry it all the time. Fantastic light. Speaking of broken clips, let's go to knives now. One of my all time favorite knives to carry is my little Spyderco Dragonfly. It's very light, it's yellow, it's cute, but I broke the clip. So I recently contacted them, they're gonna send me a new clip. But as far as knives go, I love this one. I carry it as a tool, like to cut things open and stuff. It's always good to have a knife on you. And this is my favorite one. For my tool, I also carry a Spyderco. That's, I've been carrying that for a long time. It's been a great knife for me. And that's my second clip, because I did break the first one. <laughs> but they're great about sending you additional clips. I think sometimes they charge you, sometimes they don't. But I'm very happy with that knife. As far as like more of a self-defense, last ditch, or wrestling for your firearm, someone's trying to disarm you, I carry a CRKT Bear Claw. They come in multiple configurations. You can get a straight, or you can get a serrated. They're just fantastic <laughs> knives. Now, a knife law can be funny. It definitely is, is kind of an off thing in Massachusetts here where there's state knife law and then there's local knife law. So, like the city of Boston's knife law is different than the city of Worcester's knife law. And then each specific town or city can also have knife laws. So, if you're in Boston and you go one town over, like to Cambridge, you might be in a different area as far as the weapon you can carry. And the fact you have a license to carry firearms means nothing in the state of Massachusetts for what knife you can carry. So it's, it's kind of difficult to make sure that you're always carrying a legal knife. Most of the time, if you're carrying a knife that has a blade, which is less than two inches or two inches or less, you're almost always good to go in this area. And this blade is just two inches. So it's a fixed blade. You don't have to mess around with trying to open it under stress. I carry it on my non-dominant side. My gun's on my dominant side. So I have maybe four of these. Um, it's, it's, it's a fantastic knife. You have to mess with the sheath and dremel things and flip the clip around to make it work great. But fantastic knife, I'm real happy with them. For pepper spray, one of my favorites because it's super easy to carry is my palm. It's got a spring-loaded hood with a trigger underneath. It has a clip, so it makes it super easy to just pop it in your pocket and carry it or inside your waistband. And I very rarely will leave home without this pepper spray because it's just so easy to grab and take it with you. So this is probably my most carried pepper spray. I also have a discount code for POM, so check that out below if you want one. I carry that very often, but I carry this about the same amount. And this is just a full size. This is a Sabre Red and it's a cone shot. And I'm a big fan of the cone shots for any type of up close and personal work here. So it also has the spring loaded hood. It's got probably, you know, maybe four times as much agent inside as far as the amount of time you can spray. So it gives you a lot more capability. 
and I can just drop this in my cargo pocket, no problem, and it's it's fine. It doesn't fit in my pocket. It doesn't fit in your pocket, but it's a, it's a Sabre Red, great. Uh, if I was gonna recommend, you know, pepper spray to have in a purse or in a vehicle, or maybe even, I, I like the home defense ones, but for, yeah, even a, in a fanny pack, that would be it right there. That size, that spring-loaded hood, so you don't have to mess around going right and left, and I do like a cone shot. For training aids, I love this little guy right here. It's made by Everlast. It's a hand grip strengthener. And that might seem kind of random. When I was getting my first license to carry out of the city of Boston, they make you take a shooting test. And you shoot a revolver, a 38 revolver, and part of it is shooting one-handed. And back then when I was gonna take the test, my trigger finger was apparently really weak because I, I was having a lot of trouble pulling the trigger one-handed. So I found this on Amazon and it really helped me. Like it has these four little buttons so you can press them down individually. My pinky hardly moves it at all. But when I first got this, I couldn't really pull with my trigger finger at all. I couldn't press that down and now I, I do it no problem. But if you're having an issue with grip strength or anything like that, this is like five dollars and it's a really easy way to improve your strength that's one of my favorite training aids especially if you're just starting out and you're trying to get used to all those different muscle movements in your hands and the grip on this kind of mimics the grip of a gun so that's also really helpful as well okay. dummy rounds my favorite okay so they're just solid they look like a bullet but it's just a solid piece of aluminum you could take your magazines and you can practice with them so what happens with dummy rounds is it gives you the capability of working your firearm uh, like it would possibly if there's bullets in it so if you were going to do like let's say we're practicing a reload drill so I'm shooting the weapon runs dry I drop the magazine I put the new dummy round magazine in and I either can slingshot or I can hit the slide stop and it will send forward if that dummy rounds not in there I put the magazine in it won't slingshot Okay, because an empty magazine locks the slide to the rear. I can push the slide stuff down very hard and make it go, but it's not consistent with how it would actually feel if I was loading a legitimate, you know, a legitimate magazine with bullets. So when I do that, I can practice and I can go forward. The other thing is you can practice double feeds. So you can actually set up, you can drop around in your barrel. You can put a dummy round in your magazine, send it forward and now you have a double feed. You can see those two bullets in there. And now you can practice clearing that out of the way, or, the way as fast as possible and then getting that gun up and running as well. So they work great at the range. If you've seen our, our, one of our live fire sessions, you can practice with dummy rounds and see how much of a flinch you have. But even when you're just home and you know there's no live rounds anywhere near you, dummy rounds are super handy for your reload practice your standard type 1 malfunction practice and your double feed or your type 2 malfunction practice. So having some dummy rounds is absolutely a great training aid. Okay, so our last category is going to be a bonus. So this is just kind of miscellaneous items or a topic of our own choice. So I'm choosing this fanny pack here. It's made by Hill People Gear and some of you actually recommended this company to me so I contacted them because I wanted to check out their stuff. And they sent me this fanny pack as well as a couple of their chest rigs that are used for hiking. I haven't tried those out yet, but I use this a lot. Especially when I take the dog for a walk, I'll pop that pepper spray in here and I put her treats in the front pocket and then usually a, a poop bag in the back. But it also has Velcro back here so you can stick a holster that has Velcro on it and carry your gun in here. So I've really been enjoying this a lot, especially on my dog walks with Mila. Um, so that's my bonus. My bonus is medical gear. Um, you know, if you get into a fist fight, you should probably expect to be punched. And if you get into a knife fight, you should be expected to be slashed or cut. If you get into a gun fight, you shouldn't be totally shocked if a bullet strikes you. So, you know, the idea is you shoot the bad guy way better than he shot you, but there still might be some damage to your body or someone else near you you like or care about might get hit. You might want to be able to, you know, have something on you to keep them alive. So there's a couple things as far as things that you can actually carry on your body. And I'm, so I'm not gonna talk about cat tees and soft tees and I'm not gonna talk about chest seals and needle decompression and all that other stuff. The simple things to carry in your body, things that are very easy is, first thing is a, a SWAT tee tourniquet 
and I wrap it around a quick clot package. That's the green thing in the middle, the quick clot package, okay? This is what a SWAT tee looks like when it's in the plastic. I take it out of the plastic, I wrap it around a quick clot, which is a hemostatic uh, impregnated gauze that can help to stop the bleeding very quick. If you look at this, it's thinner than a wallet or about the size of a wallet. You can easily put it in your pocket and then you have a tourniquet and treated gauze for stopping the bleeding and that tourniquet can be used as a pressure dressing or a tourniquet. So that's that's probably what I carry more often than anything else. That goes into a cargo pocket uh, and I have that. So that. The other things that I do carry on occasion is a rat tee. It, it's kind of one of, the most, one of the more painful tourniquets to use. It does hurt unless you do re like really take a lot of care, but they absolutely work. The thing is you can wear this right around your belt. So Stavrula hates belt, I always wear a belt. So this can go around your belt, and in, inside your belt loops and everything. It, it's good concealment, it's not in your way at all. So it's very simple. So it takes up like no space if you wear it around your belt, with your belt. Your belt is on too, no problem. And then something I'm getting into just recently is these stat tees. And it's basically like a zip tie, a large rugged zip tie. And if you know what you're doing, if you train with this just a little bit, you know which way to put it on, this can be a very fast tourniquet. They're super lightweight. I mean, they're just, they weigh like nothing. And that can go in a pocket real easy, one way or the other. So, more to follow on these, but I, I, I'm, I'm digging them. The more I play with them, the more I like them. But this is my primary, the SWAT T with the quick clot in the middle. Well, that's gonna be it for this video, guys. If you liked it, please comment below and let me know. And make sure to hit that thumbs up button because it really helps my channel out. But if you want us to do more of this type of video in the future, we can do different kinds like home defense favorites or maybe what we keep in our cars. We'll think of something. But let me know if you liked this kind of video. And please subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye.